I get a lot of questions about white in chickens. How to breed for it, the different types of white, how they work, and how to tell which type of white your chicken has. The answer is never simple, because there are actually two genes that cause white in chickens, recessive white and dominant white. Both genes behave quite differently and are all on different loci, which is why a chicken can be recessive white and dominant white at the same time. In this video, we will be discussing both types of white, their gene symbols, whether they are dominant, recessive, incomplete dominant, or co-dominant, how to tell which type of white your chicken has, and more. This video will get pretty technical, so if you haven't watched our previous genetic videos, I highly recommend that you do. There is one thing we've only briefly talked about in our other genetic videos, and that is the term locus. A locus is the position on a chromosome where a particular gene or allele can be found. When genes are allelic to each other, it means they occupy the same locus. The word allele comes from the same root as the word alternative, meaning alleles are alternative forms of the same gene. A locus only fits two alleles, meaning a bird can only have two alleles at one time at one locus. However, that doesn't mean that there aren't more than two alleles of a gene out there. Let's take the E locus alleles for an example, which control the distribution of femelanin and eumelanin on a chicken. A bird cannot have three alleles for duckwing or one allele for duckwing, wheaton, and partridge. It could have one allele for duckwing and one allele for birchen, but it could not have three. There are a lot of different loci on chickens, and there can also be multiple loci on one chromosome. For example, the Z sex chromosome also has a locus on it for the gold and silver gene, as well as another locus for the chocolate gene that is separate from the locus for the gold and silver gene. Different alleles with different effects can reside on the same locus. Just remember that a locus can only fit two alleles. For example, although the dominant white locus is called the dominant white locus, it could also be occupied by the Dunn gene or the smoky gene, which we don't see very often, if at all. This is because dominant white, dun, and smoky are all allelic to each other. Because dun and dominant white are on the same locus, a chicken cannot be homozygous for dominant white and dun at the same time. There could be one dun allele and one dominant white allele, or two dominant white alleles, or two smoky alleles, or one smoky allele, one dun allele, etc. But there can never be two dominant white alleles and two smoky alleles and two dun alleles at the same time because they are all allelic to each other, meaning they all occupy the same locus, but a locus only fits two alleles. Before we go on, I'd like to clarify that I will not be talking about silver, which inhibits gold and turns femelanin white, or the splash variety, which is homozygous blue. Although homozygous blue may appear white, it is caused by the blue gene, and when a splash is bred to black, it results in a heterozygous blue, which looks nothing like splash. I do have a video on the blue gene and another on silver and sex-linked genetics that will both be linked in the description. With all of that covered, let's move into our first type of white, recessive white. The recessive white gene is very simple and a perfect example of simple or complete dominance. The gene symbol for recessive white is a lowercase c, and the gene symbol for the absence of recessive white is a capital C with a plus sign to represent wild type. This plus sign afterwards is there to show that the absence of recessive white is the wild type and recessive white is a mutation. Because recessive white is a recessive gene, there must be two copies or two alleles for it to be expressed. For example, this bird is solid white. I know based on his parentage that we are dealing with recessive white as opposed to dominant white, which means that his phenotype for the recessive white locus is a lowercase c slash lowercase c. This bird, her name is Kim, is solid black, but based on her lineage, I know that she is heterozygous for recessive white. Notice that she looks exactly the same as this bird who is homozygous for capital C plus or the absence of recessive white. This bird in the middle has a genotype of capital C plus slash lowercase c, and this bird on the right has a genotype of capital C plus slash capital C plus. However, this is something you could only tell based on who their parents were or by test breeding to see what kind of offspring you get. Because this is complete dominance, the heterozygous chickens show no signs of having a white gene. When a bird is homozygous for recessive white, the white covers up both the eumelanin, which is black pigment, and femelanin, which is red pigment. Recessive white is much better at inhibiting black and red compared to dominant white, although occasionally can be imperfect. For example, this is a recessive white bird with one black feather that the recessive white was unable to fully cover. 
Keep in mind that recessive white does not make a bird albino, as pigment still remains in the eyes, shanks, which is a part of the leg, and skin. Although I will not go into them in this video, there are a few other genes that are allelic to recessive white, one which allows red eyes, and another which is autosomal albinism. Autosomal just means that it is not sex-linked. Of course, you must have these particular alleles already in your flock in order to get them. They don't just appear out of nowhere. Just because a bird is recessive white doesn't mean they don't carry other genes that are being hidden by their recessive white. There are still other genes on other loci that will pass on to any offspring, but are not phenotypically visible due to the recessive white hiding them. Due to this, sometimes, if you breed a recessive white bird to another color, you might get something very unexpected. A great example of this is something that happened to a friend of mine when she bred her black Dutch bantam hen to her recessive white silky rooster. This cross resulted in a blue birchen-based hen and a blue birchen-based male. The mom, a black Dutch bantam hen, was birchen-based with eumelanin enhancers to make her fully black. The recessive white silky male was not only recessive white, but also unexpectedly carried the blue gene, which is why some of the offspring came out blue. If you remember, blue is an incomplete dominant gene as we have discussed in past videos. The recessive white covered up any signs of him having the blue gene, yet, because the blue gene is on a different locus than the recessive white gene, he still had it and passed it on. Any color gene that is not on the same locus as recessive white, which is basically all of them, are still passed on by a bird that has recessive white. The next type of white we will discuss is dominant white. Dominant white is one of the few color genes we see in chickens that is an example of codominance rather than simple or incomplete dominance. The gene symbol for dominant white is a capital I, and the gene symbol for the absence of dominant white is a lowercase i with a plus sign. Dominant white is tricky because in theory, in heterozygous form, it should fully inhibit black, but this is not the case. Dominant white is often referred to as a leaky gene. In heterozygous form, it often lets black pigment show through, which is what is responsible for the paint variety like we see in silkies, or black specks and the white feathers of varieties like red pile that are only heterozygous for dominant white. The size and amount of these black splotches is something you can breed for or against. In heterozygous form, dominant white typically only affects eumelanin, which is black pigment, and leaves red pigment largely unaffected. It may bleach it out a little, but overall the effect on it is minor. In homozygous form, it should fully inhibit black pigment and typically results in bleached red pigment. Due to this, varieties such as buff laced, golden neck, and chamois are able to breed true. Breeding true means that the offspring are nearly identical to the parents. Even though these varieties are typically homozygous for dominant white, due to selective breeding and the fact that dominant white is leaky, the red pigment remains visible. You might be wondering in this case how to get a white chicken with dominant white without the red pigment. The answer to this is to breed the dominant white bird to one that is solid black and does not show red pigment or leakage. Breed that offspring back to the dominant white bird, which should result in 50% of the offspring being homozygous for dominant white. Of course, if you have a dominant white bird that is already showing red leakage, this will be much harder to do and likely require a lot of back and forth breeding to eliminate the leakage. Depending on how much red leakage there is, it might be faster to just start over with other white birds, especially if the birds you're starting with aren't good examples of the breed. This should eliminate red pigment, or if there was no red pigment to begin with in your dominant white bird, as long as there is no red pigment in the black chickens you choose to breed to, you shouldn't see any red pigment. With all of that in mind, how do we tell if the white we see in our chickens is caused by recessive white or dominant white? We can tell this by which type of pigment the gene affects. Starting with the easiest, Recessive white affects both eumelanin and femelanin, and generally can fully inhibit both pigments, turning the bird entirely white in homozygous form. Dominant white is what we call a leaky gene, and in heterozygous form typically only affects eumelanin, which is black pigment. The reason we call it leaky is that in heterozygous form, it allows black pigment, which it should be inhibiting, to show through, as if it were a white sheet with holes in it. In homozygous form, dominant white fully covers black pigment and, unlike recessive white, only has a minor effect on red pigment, resulting in a slightly bleached appearance. It has also been said that dominant white influences eye pigment and dilutes epidermal melanin, which is skin pigment. This isn't very helpful in breeds like silkies, though, which have fibromelanosis, a gene that causes dark skin and eyes. So both silkies that have dominant and recessive white, since they have fibromelanosis, will have dark skin and eyes. 
Sometimes you can figure out which type of white your chicken has based on its breed, provided that it is purebred or its close relatives were purebred and you kept good records. Oftentimes, the white you see in breeds like Orpingtons, Wyandots, White Plymouth Rocks, and Jersey Giants is caused by recessive white. Some breeds, like Silkies, could be either way. If your white silky came out of a paint pen, it is most likely dominant white. If it came out of a pure white pen, it could be homozygous dominant white or homozygous recessive white or both, as was the case with my male, Poe. Another way you could tell is by test breeding. If you breed a recessive white bird to any color, provided the bird you are using to test does not carry recessive white, none of the offspring should be white. If any of the offspring are white, then you are dealing with dominant white. Keep in mind that these offspring will most likely come out paint, which is white with black splotches. With all of this in mind, you might be wondering if a bird can have dominant white and recessive white at the same time. And the answer is yes. This is because dominant white and recessive white are on two different loci. The dominant white locus is separate from the recessive white locus and all the other loci on a genome. Even when you see the effects of certain genes in the phenotype, that doesn't mean there aren't other genes working that you cannot see as we explained in the beginning of the video. I hope this clears up any confusion about the different types of white in chickens, how they work, and how to tell which is which. As always, if you ever have any questions, feel free to comment below or contact me via any of the methods listed in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.